Hi guys, it is a gorgeous Tuesday, December 25th, 2012. Uh, as I sit here in my, basically my pajamas and my bare feet on, uh, on this rock in the dried up wasteland of South Austin, Texas, while I guess there's tornadoes in Houston and, and, it, and a white Christmas in Dallas and Fort Worth a couple of hours from here. A white Christmas and I'm sitting here on this rock on uh, on Christmas morning uh, me and my usual bah humbug self time for my Christmas Day rant and Christmas uh, you know it's that it's that special day of the year when my mind goes uh, wandering to two of the most evil sons of bitches on the face of this planet. They are both uh, old white men. And I am trying to decide which one to rant about. The, 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 if you don't know the, the two most evil men uh, on the planet, uh, I, 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 in case you think it is Henry Kissinger or uh, anyway, there's a long line, but, but it's not Henry Kissinger. The two most evil guys on this planet are are, are the Pope, and it doesn't matter which Pope it is, and of course the, the other uh, fat white male, fat old white male, is Santa Claus. Uh, I, I, I see po the, the Pope, I don't even know what this evil bastard's name is, he, you know, talking his, his shit today, his hypocritical shit. The problem with the Pope is, he is, he is, number one, he's below my contempt. The evil son of a bitch, uh, hypocritical bastard, is, is below my contempt. And the other thing is I can't talk about the Pope uh, without using the F word, which means I guess I would just have to make any rant about the Pope and, and let my evil twin over there on do much and have a rant about that. So I guess since I can't talk about the Pope without using the F word, I guess that leaves me with Santa Claus. Also, uh, Santa Claus, as, as much as anybody in the history of this planet, has, has wreaked more havoc on, on Mother Earth, uh, you know, than uh, certainly than Rex Tillerson, the CEO of, of Exxon. He has been responsible for uh, probably for a bunch of damn suicides. I'm sure there's been murders. Uh, good God, uh, do I need to talk about Black Friday? Uh, I, Santa Claus, and, and, and there's a chance, guys, that that Santa Claus is my own daddy. My mama, I, I never knew my daddy, I, apparently. I mean, I have no memory of the guy. My, my mama always insisted, she insisted that she was 100% sure that I was conceived on Christmas Eve. I mean, the woman was sure of it. I mean, and I was born on September 22nd, nine months later, you know. Uh, Santa comes but once a year. And uh, so maybe, maybe Santa Claus is my daddy, and I just have some abandonment issues with the son of a bitch, and uh, and I'm taking it out on him uh, from this rock on this beautiful Christmas day. So anyway, guys, what I'm uh, my rant about Santa is uh, I guess I'm going to explode, explode at least one myth and just share with you, which may or may not be a myth, cause this, this is as close as I come as Hambone uh, Ebenezer Scrooge Little Tail comes to a cute Christmas story. But uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna explode some myths. When I, the first myth is, and guys, I heard this one as recently as three days ago from uh, one of my fellow members here at the Jumbo's Unintentional Community, and it's this crap that sounds very plausible. It sounds very plausible. It sounds so plausible, I, you know, I haven't really questioned it until about an hour ago, and this is the urban myth 
that the Coca-Cola Corporation uh, is the uh, is who invented the modern version of Santa Claus. His mainly his red and white suit that uh, that Santa Claus was invented in, I believe, 1930 by an advertising executive from the Coca-Cola company and that's the first time you ever saw him in his little red and white suit that up until then that Saint Nicholas throughout uh, Saint Nick history was, was always depicted actually in a green tunic uh, not the little uh, red and white Santa suit that we all know. So anyway, where I went to have my little bubble burst was this great site, just in case you have never heard of this. Uh, it is called Snopes.com. Snopes.com, which uh, they're, they're a bunch of killjoys. And what Snopes.com is, it slaughters sacred cows by, by calling out these bullshit urban myths. So I plugged in, uh, you, you know, uh, the, uh, the claim here. So, claim, the modern image of Santa Claus was created by the Coca-Cola company and the verdict is a clear big red dot false false and i will put the link uh on here to uh anybody who has believed this perfectly believable urban myth about santa claus as much as as plausible as it is and as much as you might want to believe it it takes about one minute of research for snopes.com uh, to prove that there were plenty of images of, of the f jolly, fat, old white man in a red and white suit uh, printed decades earlier than the, first, than the first advertising campaign of Santa Claus holding a, a Coke. Okay, it's that simple. Uh, there's pl there, there are plenty of them, and you can go find them right here. I'll put the link. Then you don't even have to find it yourself. This is how easy it is to uh, eliminate these ridiculous urban myths. So this urban myth belongs right up there with FEMA camps and the New World Order depopulation agenda. But anyway, uh, from there, uh, I did uh, enjoy this story right here from Live Science. And uh, so this is all of this stuff that, that Santa Claus was in fact the myth, the whole myth of Santa Claus before he got completely co-opted completely co-opted by uh, the Coca-Cola company and Walmart and the global corporatocracy to spread ruination across this globe uh, that the, the, the myth of, of Santa Claus is, is tied directly into to shamanism in general and in particular to and I will read the headline directly from Live Science. Magic mushrooms may explain Santa and his flying reindeer. Uh, now notice the operative word here is may. This is, uh, there, there is some healthy debate among, uh, among folklorists. I guess you would call them studying the origins of Christmas and the and the pre-Christian shamanic origins of Santa Claus and it comes back into this magic mushroom now now understand the magic mushrooms being talked about in this folklore are not are not psilocybin mushrooms which are the mushrooms that I've done but are these little red and white uh, Amanita 
mascara, I believe it's it. I need to find the exact one. And, but it's the Amanita mushroom, sometimes called the fly agaric mushroom. It's these toadstools, these red toadstools with the white splotches all over them. Uh, it, it is these, uh, these, my, I, I've never done Amanita. Uh, and one reason I've never done it, uh, although it's not discussed anywhere in this article, surprisingly enough, is, is this w whether or not it's true. And uh, a, a, according to these people who have studied the uh, studied these the, these shamans, these Siberian shamans, the way they ingest, or one of the ways they ingest these magic mushrooms to to have these flying dreams and uh, these shamanic journeys is uh, they actually because they have some bad side effects such as killing you and making you puke and stuff what they do is they actually feed the amanita mushrooms to reindeer uh, reindeer are they love the, these magic mushrooms it is mentioned in here that that reindeer uh, do enjoy eating magic these these uh, amanita mushrooms so what they do is the reindeer eat them and they and their kidneys apparently process out the poison uh, that affects humans badly and then they piss out the good stuff. So these shamans, how, how the hell do they ever invent this? The shamans actually drink the reindeer piss. This is how they ingest magic mushrooms and, and guys I put you know drinking reindeer piss to get high I, I, I put that along the same lines as toad licking as, as, as licking toads genitalia to get high if you need to drink reindeer piss or or lick a toad's urethra to get high guy dude all i can say for you is is, is, is you need to get high worse than i do okay because i just eat my uh my psilocybin mushrooms uh right out of the shit uh you know you put some put some level at least grow your mushrooms and feces. Uh, but uh, anyway, but that was not what this article was about. But uh, I'm, I'm going to put a link to this article so you don't have to listen to me ramble on about it. This is a long, involved article, and I'm thrilled to see the mainstream media uh, talking about, you know, doing a positive spin on magic mushrooms. Good for you, Yahoo News and Live Science. Uh, so this is according to one theory. The story of Santa and his flying reindeer can be traced to an unlikely source, the hallucinogenic or magic mushrooms. Uh, here's an anthropologist, John Rush, quote, Santa is a modern counterpart of a shaman who consumed mind-altering plants and fungi to communicate with the spirit world. This is the very same reason that Hambone Littletail consumes mind-altering plants and fungi. Alright, according to this theory, and this is a theory, and there's plenty of people who say this theory is horse, horse shit that they get to later in the article, uh, the legend of Santa derives from shamans in the Siberian and Arctic regions who dropped in to locals' teepee-like homes with a bag full of hallucinatory mushrooms as presents in late December. As the story goes, uh, up until a few hundred years ago, uh, the, these practicing shamans or priests uh, would collect Amanita muscaria, which 
up there is called the holy mushroom. Dry them out and give them as gifts on the winter solstice. Because snow was usually blocking the doors, there was an opening in the roof that people entered and exited, thus the chimney story. And, uh, but that's just the beginning. And, and, this, and this story goes on and on, even though they never get into reindeer piss, they get into a whole lot of stuff that I was never aware of until this morning. Uh, that's just the beginning of all the symbolic connections between Amanita muscaria and the icon iconography of Christmas. According to several historians, an ethnomycologist. Ethnomycologist is someone who studies the influence that fungi have had on human societies. Uh, there you go. I count me in. Uh, I didn't even realize I was an ethnomycologist, but I certainly am. Uh, I guess I can add ethnomycologist to my list of job duties. And then they're talking about presents under the tree. This is from the book uh, Mushrooms in Mankind, where late author James Arthur posits uh, that the, these the, that Amanita muscaria lives throughout the northern hemisphere under conifer trees. Uh, and with which the fungi has a symbiotic relationship. This explains the practice of the Christmas tree and the placement of bright red and white presents underneath Christmas trees. There you go. Uh, why do people bring pine trees into their houses at the winter solstice? and place brightly colored red and white packages under their boughs as a gift to show their love for each other? It is because underneath the pine bough is the exact location where one would find this most sacred substance in the wild. And uh, then you get the reindeer connection. Reindeer are common in Siberia, and reindeer themselves seek out these hallucinogenic fungi, uh, you know, along with the uh, humans. This is a guy uh, from Harvard University, a mycologist from Harvard University, uh, who suggests his, he claims that Siberian tribesmen who ingested the magic mushroom may have hallucinated into thinking that their reindeer were flying. And my guess, the reindeer themselves uh, eating these mushrooms, they probably had some pretty uh, nice uh, uh, flying dream hallucinogens themselves. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go off on a, uh, on a Halloween tangent. Speaking of flying dreams, is, is the whole notion of, of the, the, the witch and her flying broomstick. <clears throat> Where this came from, I guess I should have done this rant on, on Halloween, is what they, these witches, these healers, what they would do, this was belladonna, belladonna uh, lilies, and what they did in the past, the best way to ingest belladonna lily, to ingest to, to make these flying dreams was to invest it through your soft tissue such as your lips. And what better place, but this is only available to women, where are the softest tissue lips on a woman? Well, guess where? Uh, so what these women would do is they would smear dildos with, they, they would boil down the belladonna and make this salve and they would smear uh, dildos with it, and they would actually masturbate with these belladonna smear dildos. They would, you know, do what women do with dildos, and they would go off into these wild, uh, these absolute wild flying dreams. 
and so the dildo became cleaned up as a witch's magic broomstick, but I'm off on the wrong holiday now. I just thought that that was a, a good uh, theory as well. Uh, okay, and uh, I mean, they go on and they're interviewing, uh, y y you know, biologists, mycologists, uh, folklorists. It, uh, it, it, it goes on and on. This is a guy, Carl Ruck from Boston University. Uh, among the Siberian shamans, you have an animal spirit you can journey with in your vision quest. Reindeer are common and familiar to people in eastern Siberia, and they also have a tradition of dressing up uh, in red suits with white spots. There you go. Uh, then they talk about, you know, how, how uh, mushrooms are real popular Christmas tree deco ornaments throughout the world. Uh, you know, the exact uh, link between eating mushrooms and modern day Christmas, unfortunately, that link is kind of hazy. Exactly when uh, eating magic mushrooms got tied up with, uh, with Christian beliefs. Uh, I've, I've had another rant uh, here about how some people, they think the biblical book of Revelation was actually, the, the revelations in that book were, were visions from magic mushrooms that uh, when you boil down the book of Revelation, that it has a direct tie. Uh, these visions of doomsday. I have had, uh, as recently as August, I have had uh, open and shut visions of doomsday ingesting magic mushrooms and calling up visions of Papa Bear. But I'm getting off topic once again. Uh, okay, and then of course, uh, that they have to go through the through the naysayers, you know, just claiming other historians uh, and folklorists are claiming this is absolute horseshit. I mean, this guy from right here at the University of Texas in Austin, about th two three miles from this rock, there's some naysayer saying that that this is all a bunch of horseshit. Uh, you know. Uh, but, but fortunately, they go back and, and close with a quote from, the, uh, from, from this guy, Ruck, from Boston University, I believe, who, who understands the most basic rudiments of shamanism, which is all I understand, basic rudiments of, of shamanism. And if you take uh, a, a couple of hours to check into Michael Harner's work on shamanism, you would understand the truth that I will close this rant with. Uh, quote, people who know about shamanism accept this story. Is there any other reason that Santa lived in the North Pole? It is a tradition that can be traced all the way back to Siberia. And uh, there you go, but as I say, I will put the link to that story. And I just thought that this was the, the closest as I can come to some cute little Christmas story <clears throat> without uh, getting into the whole uh, rant about Santa uh, right up there with the Pope uh, being one of the single most evil sons of bitches in the history of humanity, whether or not the son of a bitch was my own father. And with that, I will utter the two words that I guess it's time for me to utter here on December 25th, 2012 from The Rock. And those two words are, bye guys.